In 1964, Robert Woodrow Wilson made a startling discovery at this horn antenna with his Bell Labs colleague, Arno Penzias. The antenna was designed for tracking satellites, in particular the echo balloon, and they wanted to be able to catch it as it just came up from the horizon and track it all the way across. But Wilson and Penzias wanted to use it as a radio telescope to explore the galaxy because the antenna had some unusual properties. It could measure the brightness of a piece of the sky independent of everything else, which most radio telescopes wouldn't do. So we tried to make our receiver work and measure zero for the temperature of the sky. And it simply was not zero. The antenna was producing more noise than we would have expected. What could be causing the problem? There had been an atomic test near Hawaii, but it was slowly decaying and our signal was not. So we ruled that out. It might be noise from New York City, since we had a clear view of New York City. But what we did was point the antenna at New York City and found that it wasn't particularly hot. There had been a pair of pigeons living in the antenna. The part up there, pigeons liked it. Of course, they had pigeon droppings all over the place up there. So one day Arno and I got up there with a push broom and bucket of water and we cleaned it all out. But it didn't make much difference at all. So our control experiment never worked. But then a casual comment by a friend led to a remarkable connection. We heard about the theoretical work going on at Princeton about a hot big bang. Robert Dickey there had been investigating gravity and realized that expansion would cause the radiation to cool and it would now be microwaves. And they were going to look for that. Arno called Bob Dickey and told him what we were doing. In some detail, Bob asked some questions and then they said they would like to come for a visit. So when the Princeton people came over to see what we had done, we of course brought them up here. Uh, the cabin is where all of the measuring instruments were. So we went in there, looked at our equipment, looked at the horn reflector, and realized that we had made the measurement that they were setting out to make. That irritating noise turned out to be leftover radiation from the origin of the universe, the cosmic microwave background. But I don't think we understood at all what the implications were how much could be derived from that picture of the early universe that it presents. Cosmology has tremendously changed in the decades since then. It's a real science, and we know a lot about the universe. Not everything, of course, but there's a remarkable amount of what went on earlier that's actually frozen in that last surface where the microwave radiation interacted with matter.